complex numbers. That was a topic that we dove into. Try to get a meaning for square roots of negative numbers. Uh, this is one of the key things. We define the square root of negative 1 to be i. And in turn, that meant that i squared was equal to negative 1. So just remember that. Uh, the form of complex number is this. It's a plus bi. This is standard form. Please make sure that you read the problem very carefully. This has addition between these. So that means you just combine like terms. 8 plus 11 is 19. Negative 5i plus 12i is a positive 7i. And that's all there is to it. Uh, likewise here in number 2. Number 2 has subtraction, so if it helps you out, you can rewrite this and say this is negative 3 plus 7i. Distribute that negative so it becomes a minus 9 plus 2i. And now it's just a matter of combining like terms. Real part comes first, so negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12. Positive 7i plus 2i positive 9i. That's all you have to do. Number 3 is multiplication. So when I distribute here, that gives me 35i. And then here would give me negative 210i squared. Now, at the top of this page, we had mentioned that i squared is a negative 1 factor. So that means this guy right here really becomes a positive 210. That i squared becomes a negative 1 factor, so negative times negative is positive. So I'm going to put this in the correct order. The real part is 210, and the imaginary part is 35i. So that's the one trick you have to watch out for here. I squared becomes a negative 1. And number 4, this is just an exercise in foil. So 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times negative 2i is negative 6i. 4i times 5 is 20i. 4i uh, times negative 2i is a negative 8i squared. Everything here looks pretty, pretty decent. This guy needs to transform into a positive 8. The negative from the i squared is going to make this guy a positive 8. So I want to put together the real stuff first. 15 and 8 is 23. Minus 6i plus 20i is a positive 14i. So again, watch your signs, make sure you know how to FOIL, and i squared is going to become a negative 1 factor. When I come up here to number 5, this goes back to something that we should see as being familiar, uh, the difference of squares. However, when I have a plus b times a minus b, I do get the difference of squares. But if I have complex conjugates, a plus bi times a minus bi, you actually end up with the sum of squares. And that's what we have here. This should be the sum of squares. Now notice there's no i here. What, if you do this, it really is a difference of squares. But in the difference of squares, you would have had an i squared. And that's where it becomes a positive right here. So this is just 11 squared plus 4 squared. So there's not really a lot of crazy math to do here. It's a matter of knowing that the product of complex conjugates is the sum of squares.
So 121 plus 16, 137. That's it. Now, adding, subtracting, and multiplying is really easy. It's when we get to division that we start to have issues. And this is where multiplying with complex conjugates comes in very handy. So here, I just like rationalizing denominators. We kind of have to do that when we have complex numbers. Multiply times a complex conjugate, which here is 4 plus 3i. Of course, you have to do that to both the numerator and denominator. Now, why 4 plus 3i? Well, it makes this stuff down here become the sum of squares, 4 squared and 3 squared. So when I work this out, 16 plus 9, I end up with a denominator of 25. So all of this stuff here means my denominator is going to be 25, and I just worry about my numerator. So 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 3i is 6i. Now, we don't leave it like this. We want to separate this so we can see the real part, which is 8 25ths, and the imaginary part, which is 6 25ths, uh, you want to make sure you put your i just to the right side here, not next to the 25. Um, it does make a difference. Now, naturally, you would try to reduce these guys if you could, but there's not much you can do here. Now, this is when you're dividing by a complex number that has a real and an imaginary part. Uh, in number 7, you don't have to multiply times a conjugate. Sometimes the textbooks will say to do that. You don't have to. Uh, let me show you what happens with number 7. With number 7, I would actually split this up and say this is 12 over 8i and then 4i over 8i. Now, here on the right side, those i's can reduce. And you can even go further than that and say 4 over 8 is just 1 half. And that's exactly what happens. It's the piece over here that gets kind of messed up. And what we do is we multiply times i over i. And what this gives me is 12i over 8i squared. And you may be thinking, you just made it more complicated. Uh, yes and no. But look what happens here. 8i squared actually becomes negative 8. So you have a denominator that's not complex. It's not imaginary anymore. Now this is clearly my real part, so I'm going to put this guy in front. And then we're going to work on this guy. This guy is 12i over negative 8. So if you want to kind of think about what's going on over here to the side, 12i over negative 8. You know, how does that guy reduce? Well, he reduces by 4, so you would have 3 and 2. But don't forget about the negative here. So I'd put that in the numerator. Or Let's put it right here. I'm going to say this is 3 halves i. That's how I would go about writing my answer. I put the negative in front of the fraction, put the i just on the right side. And finally, the last problem that we have here is to simplify i to the 643rd power. Now, one of the things that we do know is this. That if you have four factors of i, that's just equal to a factor of one. That means even if you have i to the eighth, it's still going to be one. Or i to the twelfth. Every four factors of i is a factor of one. If you keep multiplying one times itself over and over, you still just get one. So the trick for a problem like this is to figure out, well, how many factors of four do I have? Well, if I divide 4 into 643, okay, just by doing a little bit of nice math here, I end up with a remainder of 3. So that means my i to the 643rd I have 643 factors of i. Well, that means that there are 160 sets of 4 
and you've got three left over. Well, i to the fourth, as we've said, is one. i to the eighth is one, and so on. So as long as this power is a multiple of four, which it is, because of it's four times 160, this is just going to give me a factor of one times i to the third. Well, what is i to the third? Well, i to the third is i squared times i, and you end up with negative i. So all of that just to say that i to the 643rd power is negative i. Okay, these guys just keep going in a pattern. Um, so it goes from i to the first, i squared, i to the third, i to the fourth. And it just keeps going around in circles every time. So i to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on and so on. But we don't want to do that 643 times. That's why I see, okay, how many complete cycles will I make? I'll make 160 complete cycles, and then I've got to go 1, 2, 3, because it's a remainder of 3. I get negative i.